Otto Bolden was there. Watch DK Metcalf, the uh, Seattle Seahawks wide receiver, and uh, ran a 10-3. Otto, kind enough to join us. Uh, what did you expect from DK Metcalf, Otto? It changed over time. Um, when I saw the play initially, um, I I think I irked a lot of football fans by saying, oh, okay, big deal, 10-4 guy runs down 10-6 guy, and America goes crazy, fastest guy on the planet. And then I started listening to people who I thought knew more than me, like uh, Ronaldo Nehemiah, for example. And, you know, he was a football player, and he obviously had a world record in the hurdles. And he said, oh, you know, DK's going to get this short. And I was like, why am I giving DK too much credit? So by the time we went on the air, I said, well, I don't know, 10 6, 10 7. If you had told me this guy was going to run 10 3, I'd have said, no way. But, uh, but he did. And, uh, and, and I think he, you know, even though he crosses the line in last, he, he, he was the winner yesterday. Well, also, I'm looking at his form uh, out of the blocks. Like, this is what you did for a living for a long time, and, and you analyzed this for a living. So if you're looking at his form, what could you correct, and what do you think is actually possible for DK Metcalf? I didn't see a lot wrong with his form. I, I said when I analyzed the, the start in real time, I said, if you looked at this video, you wouldn't be able to tell, oh, yeah, there's the NFL wide receiver. He looked like a sprinter for most of the race. Uh, one of the things that I said before the gun went off is my concern is that weight that he carries to be an NFL wide receiver and to have an NFL body is going to show up at some point during the race. Well, it probably showed up at about 80. And when everybody started to decelerate as all sprinters do towards the end of the race, he was decelerating a lot more than everybody else. He, he probably could have hung on for maybe sixth or seventh, but, um, no, his his form. I wouldn't change a lot other than he didn't he didn't relax probably as as well as a as a sprinter knows to relax because they know the fatigue is going to come. But no, form wise, he was fine. I remember Carl Lewis telling me this a couple of years ago. He said he knew that it was I think forty four steps. Is that strides? Yeah. Does that sound right? Yeah, for Carl, he'd probably take uh, forty four, maybe even fewer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and what did Usain Bolt take? Uh, Usain was 42 and a half. <laughs> and what did you use? How many strides? I was 45, 46 on a, on a, on a bad day. <laughs> what was your single best time? 9.86, ran it four times. What is that feeling like? <laughs> you know what? Before I ran sub 10, I had a teammate who had run, John Drummond, who had run 9.9. He was like, yeah, you know, it's like you step into this whole dimension <laughs> and you come out on the other side and you're like, oh, my gosh, you've run under 10 seconds. Now, mind you, when I ran under 10, I was like the eighth or ninth guy to do it. The first time I ran, uh, the first time I ran under 10 seconds, which, oh, by the way, was at the Mount Sac Relays where DK ran yesterday, it felt like. 10.05 or 10.10. And he said, oh, you ran 9.93. And I went, oh, that's it? Oh, great. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel any different to, you know, to any other good performance. You know you've run fast, but there's no, like, you know, there's no sound barrier to go through. I got you as one of the top 15, top 15 people who have walked this earth who have, have run this fast. That's pretty cool. I think I'm in the top 50. I mean, you know, look, you, you know how you, you can't compare errors. It's like trying to compare, you know, guys who used to shoot the three well to what, you know, what we see now in the NBA. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm up there still, but um, I, think my, I think my skill was being able to run both the 100 and the 200 pretty well. Paulie, what, what do you have, uh, Otto? What, 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 what's his time? I got 986, but there's only – I got 13 humans have ever run 986 or, or lower. Oh, wow. So, Dan, you're right. I'm still in the top 15. Yeah. Maybe you should take my job at, at, uh, at NBC because I, I certainly should have known that. I didn't think I was in the top 15 if D I thought maybe top 20. If DK Metcalf called you and said, give yeah. me some advice, and do you think I could actually do this and make the Olympic team in four years? Oh, I think, I think he'd, he'd have a shot. The first thing is that he'd have to be closer to 200 pounds than 235. And you notice when uh, Lewis Johnson asked him yesterday, so, you know, are you going to train more? Like, he's like, yo, I got mini camp. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he, knows, he knows who cuts the checks in his life. But, yes, if, if he called me and said in four years, 
um, I think he'd have a legitimate shot because I, I think he, I mean, obviously he's a freak of an athlete because to carry that weight for that far and run 1036, having trained for what, four or five months, I think is, is, is so amazing. Um, he'd have to lose a lot of weight and he'd have to really train hard, but he certainly, he has the chops, no question. Would you rather be Usain Bolt or Tom Brady have their careers? Oh, wow. I mean, obviously, my track and field bias is going to show. You know what? They're both pretty equal because both of them have one thing in common. I don't think anybody is going to doubt that they are the greatest of all time in their sport and certainly in, in, in sports, period. So, um yeah, probably, probably Bolt. <laughs> but I, I think with Bolt, somebody eventually comes along and will be faster than him. I don't know when, but somebody will. It's going to be really hard for somebody to come along and win seven Super Bowls. So I, I, I would rather be Tom Brady. But I will say, if, if Usain Bolt was at a cocktail party and so was Tom Brady, I'm probably more curious about Usain Bolt and some of the things <laughs> that, that I could ask him. Well, I would counter that, Dan, by saying that it is, go- you know, everybody, uh, sprinting is not math. So you see guys running like 9.8 or 9.7. You go, well, that's, that's not too far off. The record's 9.58. <laughs> I am saying to you that the gap, bet- the gap between what they're running now yeah. and 9.58 and 19.19, which are both world records, and the gap between whoever has, I don't know, <laughs> four or three Super Bowl rings and Brady is about the same. So don't, don't think that the both world records are going anywhere anytime soon. It's going to be a long time before somebody gets there, trust me. Is there trash talking in sprinting? There used to be in my era. This is the kumbaya generation. They, they, don't, they don't actually like each other, but they pretend they do because it's the politically correct era. Um, I have to say, you know, about, you know, getting back to DK, I looked yesterday and all weekend for any sign of like superiority. Like he didn't walk into this track meet like, yeah, I'm the big Pro Bowl wide receiver. You guys are mere sprinters. This guy was humble. He, he, you know, he tried to assimilate. He didn't, he didn't even leave after his, he, he stayed and watched the entire meet. And I went, my God, I'm a 49er fan since I was born. It's against my religion to like a Seahawk, but I'm gonna follow this guy because I think <laughs> I think he's a re- I think he's a fantastic kid. Are you but, an, are um, you a Niners fan? I am a Niners fan. Grew up watching Montana to Rice and Clark and everybody. Yes, Ronnie Lott, the whole deal. Did you Love try to Niners. play football? You know what? When I moved here uh, at 14, my high school, Jamaica High School, which produced some guy named Bob Beeman, um, did not have a football team. So I think at the time when I should have, like, maybe been pulled in that direction, I didn't have anywhere to go. And I stayed in soccer and then eventually went to track. If if we ran the 100 meter today, what would you run? Yeah. Uh, probably like 11, 1, 10, 0, uh, 11, 0, yeah. So we're about even. Oh, yeah. We're so even. <laughs> <laughs> we're so even. <laughs> It's great to catch up with you again, Otto. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Hope you uh, have a great summer. Absolutely. You too, guys. Always good to be on with you. That's uh, Otto Bolden, NBC Sports lead track analyst, Olympic analyst, and uh, one of the top 15 times, 100-meter dash times in the history of the world. <laughs>